Katie, and we've come here today to do a show for you. It's called Danger High Voltage. The outreach team from the London Science Museum are at Werner's School near Manchester. Their goal? To spark some imaginations and ignite a passion for science. Nora Maddock and Katie Amott will be delivering a show to the Year 7s, followed by a science workshop. The ultimate aim is to turn the students into science communicators themselves. So that it's all about um, exploring for themselves um, and having fun. It's to get people enthused about science. Danger High Voltage is all about electricity. The school believes that a visit from professional science communicators can work wonders for enthusiasm. Shower. The shower? Yeah, electric shower? Yeah. Subject leader for science, Nicola Budd, can hardly wait. The main focus for today is to ensure that the children are engaged and excited about science and hopefully they're going to come out of the workshops like totally buzzing, they're going to take it around the rest of the school, be telling the other students. First up, the whole of Year 7 are treated to a show. But that's a boring diagram. We don't do boring diagrams in the Science Museum, so I need to do an experiment and I'm going to need three volunteers. OK, one, two, and three. The main things we want them to learn at the end of it are what electricity is and how it's related to magnetism. I am taking you on a holiday to Hawaii, but in Hawaii, everyone wears outfits like these. <laughs> We're trying to keep the learning outcomes quite simple because electricity is such an abstract um, area of science. It's like, very difficult for teachers to teach and that's why we developed the show as a way of kind of supporting them in their teaching and making it as interactive as possible so that students are more likely to remember those um, key messages. These are the electrons, these blue balls. Your bodies are the nucleus. I need you to spin those electrons around your body as fast as you can. Go! Yeah! Cheers! Keep going! Woo! I don't know if any of you have heard the saying, opposites attract. Have you? <laughs> well, that's just what happens with our charges. So you have a positive and a minus. <laughs> and All I need you to do is pull those two ends apart. Okay. It certainly sparks my imagination and quite a few of the team managed to get up and watch it so they are buzzing already. I think that sparked a few ideas amongst our team. Turn it on and we'll see what happens. A lot of schools do have Van de Graaff generators and in some schools we've been to they've thought oh that's a great idea with the pie plates, the metal pie plates and it's inspired them to try and do that themselves. What do light charges do? They repel each other. So these repelled each other all over the hall. It's clearly fun to watch. Keep away! Want some more? Yeah! But soon it will be the students' turn to take to the stage. 30 of them will be performing their own presentations of some slightly simpler but no less scientific demonstrations. But before the students get their hands on the props, Katie, Nora and fellow outreach educator Kate Herbert need to show them how they work and explain the science involved. Now this one's called Alka-Seltzer rockets and it's called Alka-Seltzer rockets because we use Alka-Seltzer to make some rockets. We had eight different demos. Um, they're all quite simple demos to do. Most people could do them at home. They're with just simple things. You need about half a tablet. So if you put that in the lid, that's it. I think the key to the success of those demos is that we're using everyday things, like the Alka-Seltzer rockets, just using Alka-Seltzer tablets, which anyone can buy in a chemist. What I'm going to do is put about four teaspoons of water into this canister. The aim is not to get the science so complicated that the kids struggle with it. Put the lid on, click it shut, give it a good shake, and then put it lid down on the table. Can you do that? Yeah. Three, Three two, two, one, one go! go. Oh, it's quicker than me. Put it down on the table and stand back, Sam. Right there. Oh! Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <I've> won! <laughs> Sorry about that, Sam. Yours is bulging loads, it will come up in a minute. Oh. There's quite a wow, large wow factor to that. It's quite surprising when the rockets shoot off and they can go travel quite a large distance. So there's an element of surprise. It seems to be really key to the success of those demos and their popularity. The next demonstration I'm going to do for you today is called the Ball Blaster. And we call this one the Bernoulli Blower. You might have seen something a bit like this. Has anyone seen one of these before? 
is a really good a way of looking at energy transfer. Now, this air came out in a vortex. Practice time. The students are split into groups, and each group has 30 minutes to rehearse before they will have to present back to the rest of the class. Half fill the glasses with water and arrange them in a triangle. This is going to be well fun. <laughs> I'm going to leave those pepper cream eggs with you, but I expect there to be three when we practice, OK? <laughs> is it OK if you end up with three in pieces? <laughs> we can always get one. They learn more about how to present back to us, and that's what we want out of the session, really. We want them to be more confident by the end. We want them to feel like they can stand in front of a group and present like we do. Right here. It's a fantastic way of learning um, because the students were actually involved, they were hands-on, they were up, they were doing, they were bringing across skills from other areas in the curriculum such as English, such as performing arts, to be able to actually present the science back. Yeah, that's about right. Communication is a vital part of the key Stage 3 science curriculum and the outreach team hope that by discussing and debating the science behind each demonstration, the students are on the path to developing a critical scientific awareness of the world around them. I think it's very important that um, young people especially don't view science as being something that other people do and that adults in white coats do and that it's something that they can do themselves. I think that's a really important skill that's being recognised in the curriculum more nowadays and there have been changes to the Key Stage 3 curriculum recently and there have been changes to Key Stage 4 and Post 16 and they're really trying to encourage young people to enter into debate about really topical scientific issues and just giving them the confidence to make sense of it for themselves, I think it's really important. Probably pulling it would make it go better. It'd be strong to put the ground, but if we slap it, it's push force. Like that and go. What do you want me to do, guys? I think what was nice about Nicola with the class today is when they were doing their presentation skills, she got right in there, she was helping them out, she knew exactly what they were doing, so she's got a really good support for them over the next few weeks. And I think that's really nice. And she feels part of our project too, it's not just for the kids, it's for the teachers too. Oh, so what was the force that there wasn't much of? Friction. Oh. But why aren't they floating around? It's the gravity that keeps them down. OK, you've got one more minute to practice with the props. Then I'm going to take it away and you're going to practice what you're going to say for your presentation. That's what we're doing. Perfect. So go through it as if you're doing it for your audience. Yeah. So starting with your names, then the name of the demonstration. So you're throwing the water. You're and doing that over the red and I'm doing that. And you're doing most of the talking. Hi, I'm Sam. Hi, I'm Jane. And hi, I'm Michael. And you go, we are now going to demonstrate the egg drop. And you've got to, like, include, no, like, it's some information it in it. This really is giving them the opportunity to arm them with the skills to get out there and present the science, the science that they're happy with, the science that they are comfortable with. I'm Alicia. I'm Olivia. And I'm Lauren. And we're going to tell you about the balloon blower. First you turn it on, add a ping pong ball and watch it fly. And if you really want to dare yourself, look, add two. You have to put it on top and voila, two ping pong balls. Now, if you really want to challenge yourself, put one on and try to turn it slightly. You have to turn it very gently then. I'm not dropping it. The science is when the fast hair is going up, it's low pressure, and the air on the outside is high pressure, and it pushes in on the ball. So the ball stays in and goes up. By presenting all of those demos back to us, they prove to us that they understand them. <laughs> That actually provides not just a learning tool for the students, but an assessment tool for the members of staff so that we can see what exactly it is that they have and haven't understood. It does this because all the energy from the medium-sized ball and the large ball gets transferred to the big, 
to the small ball. Yeah, it gets forced out in a vortex motion. If she hits herself, it's none of our faults. <laughs> when you're ready. So how can teachers make the most of outreach opportunities? The really important thing is to not just see it as a one-off. Whilst the kids might be inspired and think, wow, I'd love to know more about that, if it's not followed up in the classroom, then they might lose that spark and it's gone maybe forever. So I think it's nice to maybe plan some lessons after we visit, maybe a preemptive lesson as well about what we're going to be talking about, and then follow that up so that things are cemented in their heads straight after the show. Part of the outreach project is that um, myself and a couple of other members of staff will keep working with the team of students that has done the communication skills workshop and help those students to form a presentation. And obviously for a presentation you need an audience. And we thought it would be a really nice idea to invite our Year 6, um, the, which are the primary schools that will be coming up in September, to come to the school and to see the sort of exciting things that are happening in science now. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm Michael. And I'm Jake. And I'm going to be presenting this. What we are going to be doing is called, it is called the egg drop and it's a very scientific theory. First of all, you need a coaster with a shiny edge and also a rough edge outside on the back. Three glasses set up in a triangle on the table. Three cream eggs or egg looking things and three tubes all preferably the same size. First of all, you need to put the coaster on top of the glasses that have been set out on the table. Also, you need to get the tubes directly centre of those glasses underneath the coaster. Now, you need to put the cream eggs or egg looking things on top of the tubes. With a countdown. Three, two, one. The science behind this is, with the rough side, it pulls the tubes away as you hit the uh, card, and the sl slidey side, so it slips off the glasses. The gravity makes the eggs fall into the glasses. You think with the smoother side, there is less friction when you place it down, and it'll slide a lot quicker. As in the rough side, there's a lot more friction, which means it's very hard to pull the glasses as well. Of course, many of these demonstrations are easy to recreate. The props are easy to get hold of, and many ideas for similar classroom experiments can be found online. But if you do plan on taking advantage of any outreach opportunities, then think through how your school can make the most of it. The skills and enthusiasm that's offered today definitely can be taken and pulled in many different directions. So my advice to other teachers planning on doing this is don't treat it as one-off, actually work it into the curriculum, get other professionals on board and share it around. <laughs>